Yeah, am I live? There we go. Okay, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I am going to be talking about uh, Drupal Core and contribu con contributing to Drupal Core and hopefully sort of give you some handholds if you want to get into that. Um, there's two names up there. We were supposed to be doing this with the two of us. Um, unfortunately, Derek got sick uh, and he's in quarantine. Uh, so he came all, all the way over from Hawaii and now he's not here. So uh, I'm going to have to do this by myself, uh, so bear with me. Um, so who were we supposed to be? Uh, I'm Len. I'm Len Nude on Drupal.org. Uh, I'm one of the Drupal devs at I.O. Uh, and Derek is DWW on Drupal.org. And if you don't know who that is, you've not been spending enough time in the issue queue. Uh, he's been everywhere and he has been there for 18 years and uh, contributing quite a lot. So the idea was that we were going to talk about contributing to core and giving you two different perspectives of how you can get going and how we started out and you can cherry pick from that from what you will. Uh, so it's not going to be just my perspective. So you're going to have to do it with that. Um, so we were going to set out our origin stories, how we got started, and see if that somehow uh, inspired you to, to think maybe, oh, OK, so, so that's how you can get going. So I'm just going to present you with mine. And it's going to be one view. Um, and lots of people get started in different ways. But maybe you can take something from this. Um, so I'm Lendude. My account was created in 2010. Uh, but it took until 2015 before I actually got started. So if you've been around Drupal for a while and you never contributed and you think, ah, that time has passed, it doesn't have to be. You know, there's always time to get going. Um, so it took me about 15 years or five years to do it. And once I got into it and saw what it was given to me, uh, it energized me and I started doing things. But I found that I needed some focus. Just helping uh, doesn't get you anywhere. You know, you want to have some focus. So I focused first on working on views issues. So views had just gotten into core, and I thought, you know, sounds like a worthwhile thing, and you know, I like to put myself into a certain amount of pain, so let's work on views. That sounded like fun. Um, so I did, uh, and once it got going, uh, they actually asked me to become one of the maintainers for views in core. Reluctantly, I agreed, uh, but that gave us gave some more focus. So that really helped me to focus on what I want to be helping on, finding something to do and you know, focusing on that. Through views, I got into contact with automated testing, something I had never really been into, but views has a lot of automated tests and needs a lot of automated tests. So I started working on that, and then I got asked to do the PHP unit initiative and code that. Uh, so that gave me a new focus, automated testing. So we did the migration from simple test to PHP unit. I learned a ton about automated testing, which was awesome. But it ended, we, we finished it, you know, we moved away from simple test, we had PHP unit. So I needed to find a new focus, and that focus became the bug smash initiative, which I will go in depth in a little later. But that gave me some new focus, and now, uh, maybe it's time for something new again. So Starshot is here. It might be something worth focusing on. So what I wanted, wanted to show here is mostly how do I keep myself interested in core contribution? It's finding things to focus on. Find those groups of people with a similar interest and work with that. And groups of people with similar interest in Drupal are called initiatives. So we're going to talk a little bit about those initiatives. But before we get there, I want to just share some basic truth that I found while contributing. Um, when you're contributing, it's very much you get out what you put in. Yeah? The Drupal community is very friendly. They're very nice. They're not going to push you. They're not going to pull you. So if you get into a contribute room and you sit down and wait for something to happen, nothing will happen because they're all really nice. They're not going to pull on you. They're not going to push you. Everything's going to go at your own pace. So if you have the feeling that something is not going at the pace you want, that's probably you not pushing it enough. Self-motivation is key. Self-motivation alone won't get you there. You need more. But if you don't have that self-motivation to contribute, don't expect a lot out of it. People are not going to 
put their time in to push and pull you along. So if you want to make an effort, be sure that you actually want to make that effort. And it takes a certain amount of effort to do this. But if you do decide to do this, what do you get? Well, first of all, you get really deep knowledge about the system that you're working with. You know, you're, you're working on systems and the knowledge that you have is probably shared by like five or six people in the world if you're down deep enough. Which can be really valuable to you, to your colleagues, to your clients, but mostly it's about, you know, evolving yourself, learning new stuff. To me, at least, to me, it is. And this gives you more depth of knowledge than you could ever dream of. Uh, also, if you're coding for Drupal core, you're building code that needs to work on 200,000 websites. I don't know about any of you, but in my normal day job, the code that I write gets used on one website. Yeah, the custom code I write is used on one website. We have a couple of multi-site things that maybe gets used on five or six or seven, but that's it. There's not, I know there's some multi-sites out there with 50, but it doesn't get much bigger than that. If you're doing Drupal core, you have to think in a way that it will work and not break for 200,000 websites, which is insane. You will learn to be flexible in your code and your code will be so reusable uh, and much more so than if you're used to just writing for one, where it only has to work for one platform. And once you get your stuff up there, you can get reviews from the people that are the most knowledge about Drupal in the world. They will give you your reviews. They will give you feedback on your code, on the things you've done, which can be very invaluable. It's a level of review you don't normally get if you just work in the job. So to me, that's pretty, uh, pretty it's worth it. Um, but if you want to get started, so I talked about some of the initiatives that I worked on. So what are you, if, you, if you want to start now, what, what should you be looking into? What, you, you want to find that focus group, that group of like-minded people that you can work with? Because you want to find something interesting to work on with that self-motivation. If you're working on something you're not interested in, that self-motivation is never going to come. So you got to find something that you're interested in. So in Drupal, those are the initiatives. They come in two flavors, generally speaking, strategic initiatives and community initiatives. And now they're Starshot, which is probably a strategic initiative, I'm thinking, but it might be a bit more than that. Um, so strategic initiatives, what are they about? They're about uh, furthering Drupal um, as a product. They're usually about making Drupal a viable choice as a CMS in the larger CMS market. Yeah, they're about the strategic goals that Drupal needs in order to stay competitive in the market. So stuff like media. We needed media because other CMSs have media and when you started shipping Drupal without media, everybody was going, you know, what's this? We need this. Same goes for project browser and automatic updates. For if you're a developer uh, at a shop, you're thinking project browser, automatic updates, do I really need that? Do I use that for my regular job? Maybe not. But as a product, all the competitors for Drupal have these things. So in order to stay competitive, it needs that. So those are strategic initiatives. Same sort of goes for Starshot. You want, people want and expect a good out of the box experience when they install it, which Drupal, let's be honest, currently doesn't have. So in order to make sure we don't lose uh, the lead that we might have had at some point, uh, or if we can catch up to our competitors, those are what strategic initiatives are about. So if you're about you know, making Drupal a stronger product, these are the sort of initiatives you need to be looking at. Those, those things will have what, you, what you're interested in. The other flavor that's there are community initiatives. So community initiatives, are founded by community members and they find a group of people that are interested in a similar thing. And it's not usually something that necessarily helps sell Drupal. So one of the things is configuration management 2.0. If you work with Drupal every day, you use configuration management and it's fantastic that it's there, but if you work with it every day, you're gonna run into some things that aren't great yet. 
And in order to make that better, it needs to be completely rewritten. And so there's an initiative for that. No salesperson in the world is going to sell a single unit of Drupal with a better configuration management system. But for us working with it, it's important that we want to keep working with Drupal. It needs these sort of systems. It needs to be better, because otherwise, all the people working with Drupal are going to run away. So that's what uh, community initiatives are about. Same goes for the PHP unit initiative that we did. Simple test to PHP unit. No sales manager ever sold a single unit of Drupal because we have a different testing method. But if you want to work with Drupal, or if you want to get people interested in Drupal, we need these kind of things to bring them in. People know PHP unit, they had no idea what simple test was, so we got to move them over. Well, sort of same goes for the bug smash initiative, which I'm getting into later and in some more depth, or now, actually. So the Bug Smash initiative, as you saw from my timeline, is what I was working on the last couple of years. Um, so every initiative has a couple of goals. So if you're interested in joining an initiative or helping an initiative out, look at its goals. So here it was, we want less open bugs, and we want bugs to be open for a shorter amount of time. Basically, the last point here is people often have the feeling that when they uh, open a bug report in, for Drupal core, it gets ignored. You can open a bug report and then for two years, nothing happens. This is not uncommon. So we want to work on that and see if we can, you know, get people, um, take away that feeling where, where, where they had the feeling that were being ignored. Uh, as a side note here is the last point. The reasons for opening initiatives for core can be very diverse. So the last point here, that they wanted an initiative based in Australia, can be very valid as well, because most of the initiatives that are based are either in Europe or in the US, which means everybody in Australia is asleep whenever they do their meetings. So that's why this one has their meetings when we're asleep. Now, when we started working on this, uh, back in 2020, there were 7,500 open bug reports for Drupal core. Uh, in various states, and, and that's quite a lot, and they were distributed like this over the years. And as you can see, it's every year you'd have like a thousand extra open bugs per year. So it was growing steadily. So the idea of the initiative was do something to reverse this. And I'm not sure if you can see it, because there's not a lot of pixels, but the 14, 15, 16, they might look empty, but they're not empty. There are still bugs there. Uh, stuff could be open really long, especially considering that Drupal 10 had been out for about, or Drupal 8 had been out for about eight years by this time. So there's 16-year-old bugs for software that's eight years old. Then you gotta come up with a system. So every initiative will find a way to do their thing. Um, and for the bug smash initiative, the first idea was we take about 20 bugs and we have a dedicated group of people, some of them very, very knowledgeable about working on Drupal and on core, and we have some new people that wanna learn. And we take about 20 bugs and we focus on that and we fix those bugs. And when we fix one, we get a new one in and we work on that and we fix bugs and yay, everything will be great. Turns out that fixing bugs in Drupal core is really, really hard. And it goes really, really slow. Um, so even with this group of people, progress was really slow and really hard. My headset is coming loose, which is pretty annoying. There we go. Um, and if you want to motivate people, you've got to have some reason for them to keep working on something. And if you don't have, see any progress, even though you're putting in a lot of work, uh, that's not very motivating because you know, the perceived number of bugs is still going up by about 800 every year, even though we were working very hard. So that wasn't working. So you always have to be flexible with these kinds of things because it's a community initiative you're open to, you know, you get, left doesn't work, and let's, let's go right, you have to change it up. There's no real guidelines there. Uh, so the new approach was going for triage. And I'll go a little into what triage is exactly when you do bug triage, but basically it's not about fixing the bug, but about 
moving it forward, instead of having it sitting in the issue queue with nobody looking at it, try to make it move someplace, even if it's into the trash. That's fine, but move it somewhere. Uh, we also came up with a thing called Bug Bingo, which allows you to press a button and it'll pop up a random bug from the issue queue. Because if you go into a sprint room and you look at what people are working on, they were working basically on the first four pages of the issue queue. That's 200 bugs. As you can see, there were 7,500 7, bugs. So the other 7,300 bugs were never ever looked at because everybody's looking at the first four pages. So how do you open that up and make people look at it? Because there's genuine bugs there, but there's also a lot of cruft that we can just close. So bug bingo. Go something random instead of sticking to that force four pages. And that way, hopefully, clean the issue queue and then be left over with something that's you know, the bugs that are worthwhile to work on where all that energy that's needed to fix a bug is actually put into an effort to fix a bug instead of everything that's around it. So triage is something that we, that, that we did a lot, which is, you know, you look at a bug and somebody says they have a problem, but quite often it's one person on one, one website that has a problem. Okay, that might be a core bug, but it might just be something doing, somebody doing something wrong. So find steps to reproduce, add them to the issue. Then we know, okay, this is an actual bug. And when somebody else comes along a year later, they'll know, okay, so this is how I can reproduce it. Is this still a problem? Can I still reproduce it or has it been fixed in the meantime? But at least it's clear that it's a problem in core. Uh, same goes for updating issue summaries. You can do that with the steps to reproduce, but also we've all been to issues where there are like 300 comments and you open it up and you go, yeah, never mind, and you run away. So how great would it be if somebody took the time to read those 300 comments and then made a good summary, and then you can get it moving again, where you only need to read the issue summary to know, okay, I can actually help out here, instead of having to read 300 comments, which you're never gonna do. Quite a lot of the bugs in Drupal core aren't bugs at all. They're feature requests, or they're tasks, or stuff that needs doing. Okay, so we can get those off the bug list. Uh, old and outdated issues. If nobody looks at the old bugs because they're not on the first four pages, you're gonna have a lot of leftover old stuff. Same goes for closing duplicates. There's no way to find the right bug if your mountain of bugs is, you know, seven and a half thousand big. So you're, you're inevitably gonna get duplicates and those are just gonna make things worse. So closing those really helps. One of the big advantages of triage is it only takes a short time to do. So my commute to work, from, I live in Amsterdam, I work in Utrecht, takes 18 minutes. You know what I do in those 18 minutes? Open a bug bingo, get a random bug, triage a bug. I can do that in 18 minutes. It doesn't help a lot. It's not the same impact as fixing a bug, but I can't fix a core bug in 18 minutes, usually. But I can still have a little bit of impact move it forward. So if you have a little bit of time and you think, hey, I could do something, grab a bug, triage it. Don't try to fix it. It'd be, yeah, it'd be awesome if you could fix it, but be honest. Y you need much, much more time for that than what you know, I at least usually have. So with a small amount of time, you can still have an impact. If you have some more time, you can do reviews. Bug Smash Initiative did a lot of reviewing. So it takes a little bit more knowledge about what you're looking at, but you can make an impact by just reviewing. Don't try to fix it. Usually it takes way too long and too much effort. Try a review. All the reviewing of the Bug Smash initiative spawned the Needs Review Queue initiative, which is an initiative that desperately needs a better name. But uh, the great thing about that is if you looked at the slide where I uh, sh showed you the, the current bug stats, in 2020, there were 1,600 bugs in core that needed review. Right now, there are 50. Needs review queue initiative. Brought that all the way down, which means that if you have some time to review, you know what to look for. You, the, the ones that need review actually need review. It helps focus the limited amount of time that we all have to contribute onto the issues that actually benefit from our time. Just to illustrate that people often think that 
Drupal core is this big, unmoving, monolithic thing. It's hard to get anything done. It's not untrue, but this was the first step that I show you. This was before. This is 2020. We tried to fix bug, didn't really work. This is this April. So we went from here to here. Just by cleaning up, doing small things. Don't try to make, you know, don't try to hit home runs. Just do the small things. Cleaning it up and making sure that when somebody has the time to focus on fixing a bug, they're actually putting their effort into something that's worth fixing without first having to spend hours trying to find out whether or not th that what they want to work on is actually worth working on. Um, that's that. Well, just some things, other things you, you want to consider, uh, why you might want to contribute if you're thinking about it. Um, and how you can help, like I said, think about the small things, think about, you know, spending, if you have a small amount of time, try not, try not to do anything too big. And find, try to find something that you can focus on. And initiatives really help with that. Find an initiative where you say, oh, Hmm, this is interesting. And then invest in that. That's how you try and get things done in Drupal Core. So if you're interested in Bug Smash, there's a Slack channel, join us. We do a daily triage target. We just take a random bug, put it up in the Slack channel, and people can comment on it. Even if you're just listening in, if you're wondering, you know, how does this triage thing work, listen in, what do what people say. We also do one postponed needs infor more information from maintainer issue. Um, see if we can close it. You know, people, you ask for steps to reproduce. They're not given for a year. Okay, let's be honest, we can probably close that. So help clean it, clean it up that way. Um, there are threads, because they're in Australia, uh, the main, People, the, the meetings are often at, at six in the morning or something like that, but it's all asynchronous. You can comment later um, and look into uh, what's happening there if you're interested. So that was my spiel. Any questions? No. Please. <laughs> In that case, thank you. Thank you.